Hey everybody, Grandmaster Ben Feingold here at the Chess Club and Scholastic Center of Atlanta. Um, today's Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving. Um, as most of you know, who follow the channel or follow our Facebook page or Twitter page or know me or, you know, aren't living under a rock, there was a match played um, almost exactly two weeks ago between Richard Staples and David Nastasio, who are local club members. Richard's rated 1500 and David's rated about 1850. And they played a six game match and we had a sponsor. Thank you, Thomas Call. And um, while well, I want to analyze the games, there was a couple of pretty bad blunders, but otherwise the moves were pretty reasonable, I thought. Um, they played it here on a Saturday and a Sunday a couple of weeks ago. Um, three games on Saturday, three on Sunday. And I think the time control was game 60, although I'm not certain if there was a delay or increment. I think there was a five second delay, but I'm not 100% sure on that, but it was game 60. Um, before we do the game analysis from the Nastasio Staples match, let's look at an interview I did with the players uh, Sunday morning um, after the first three games were played, but before the last three, and see what their insights are of the match so far. Yeah. Okay. All right, this is Grandmaster Ben Feingold here with uh, David Anastasio and Richard Staples playing their match. Richard, how did this uh, match begin? What happened? Oh, uh, David and I was, were chit chatting on Facebook, and he made a comment that I, he could give me lessons. And I said, Well, David, um, the uh, only time we played, I had black and I drew you easily. Just can you imagine uh, what I do with white against you? And it went back and forth like that. And, uh, He's talking a little bit of trash, and it just gradually escalated. And how long did it take for this match to get set up after the trash talking? Well, we, uh, I just asked him if he wanted to play a six-game match, and uh, luckily now we have a chess center, so we can organize these kind of matches and uh, learn a lot, because uh, before it was impossible. You know, Also with the Georgia Chess Association, if you try to organize a match, they put every kind of obstacle and they don't let you do it. Uh, instead, of, luckily now we have this place that is great and gives uh, to every chess player the chance to improve and uh, learn uh, chess. Awesome. Now before I forget, let me give you the wallet I offered you for, for, that, for that endorsement. Okay. Okay. So, well, you, haven't, you haven't heard mine yet. Come on. That's right. Okay, so uh, we'll start with Richard. Let's, what do you think of the first three games so far? I've managed to mess up uh, first two games, the match messed up in promising positions and lost. Uh, last game, third round was a draw. Uh, David tried to uh, goad me into uh, it was a vicious of opposite colors, and he tried to goad me into uh, making an incorrect move and giving him a square to the win. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was going to play that game, so uh, he we we agreed the draw after I made the correct move. And what did you think of the first three games? I think that uh, Richard is a really great uh, opponent. I was afraid of him because uh, obviously he's a veteran player. He has made more than 400 tournaments. So he has a really a huge uh, history and he was uh, rated more than 1700, nearly 1800, I think. Uh, I don't know his uh, peak, but uh, it was... 1799 high. back then. Uh, so uh, uh, it's clearly uh, an opponent that one must be very careful of. Great. And um, after, so this is a six game match and the score is two and a half half uh, mm -hmm. so far. Do you guys expect after this match you'll be looking for other opponents and uh, trying to play matches in the future? If you're happy to host them, I'm happy to play. Awesome. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, you want to play some more matches? Yeah, because I think uh, it's uh, better than playing in a tournament where there is a big difference of uh, mm -hmm. rating sometimes. Uh, uh, some kids are underrated and you try to push too hard to avoid to lose rating points. And then, of course, I think uh, the match prove preparation also, because you have to prepare your openings, you have to study your opponent, you have to do a lot of stuff. Uh, so I think a match is more balanced and quite more interesting. Uh, thank you very much and thank you for having this Enjoyed great Enjoyed it. It's been a great, great time doing this. and. Uh, Look forward to tomorrow. All right. Great, guys. See you guys tomorrow. Thank All you. All right. Okay. That was the interview we did. Now let's do some game analysis. Okay. So um, first game, Richard's White against David. Richard's the 1500. And um, Nastasio played the Dutch, a move delayed. Um, White played sort of a passive way, but it's okay. E3. 
Yeah, it was made some sense. Bishop out. I guess in this position, Black normally wants to play Bishop B7 to, you know, put pressure on the diagonal here. But um, maybe White's move was to stop Black from trading the bishops with Bishop A6. Maybe. So he played Queen E2. Okay. And White also attempted to Fianchetto, which is usually what White does when he plays E3 pretty early. Knight C6, I assume the idea is to play Knight B4, so he stopped that with A3. The rest of the moves were pretty reasonable, I thought. Um, yeah, this all looks good. Okay, I'd probably rather have White, but it's close. Um, just because the bishop on B7 isn't great, and I don't know, White has E5, and he can kick out the knight on E4. Okay. I don't know, probably I would say the computer would say something like 0.19 for white. Let's see what happens here. It thinks forever. Uh, so far it likes white a little more than I do. 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Okay. So the computer likes white even more than I thought. Okay, he played 95. Pretty aggressive move. Um, he could play f3 and kick out the knight later. Okay, they traded. And black played a5, which not sure if that would have occurred to me. But I guess if you play c5 too early, your knight can't go to c5. Sometimes you want to play knight c5. So, in fact, I'm guessing you could have played knight c5 there. Okay, f4, that's definitely not a move I would have considered because um, I could play f3 and kick out the knight and not worry about it anymore. So. F4 is okay, because he moved his knight anyway, but I don't like the follow-up, which was to do a rook lift, because there's, there's no attack over there. Um, if you want to attack on the king side after the move F4, I think you have to play G4 at some point, which is pretty risky, but okay, it has some rewards too. Then you could put a white rook on the G file and attack F5 and the G line and, you know, have some attack maybe. Um, but he didn't do that. He played rook f3, which I don't like, because it's uh, rook's sort of out of play there, and it's lined up with the bishop on b7, which causes some tactical problems. Takes d4 is a good move with a discovered attack on the rook. Black has the two bishops. Um, d takes e3 is good. Yeah, and here um, black made a mistake, and white didn't punish it. Uh, computer says black has a big advantage here. I can't argue, but he played bishop c5, and this allows a tactical shot, which both players missed, I guess. Um, he could play d4 now, and obviously if I go back to e7, then bishop c5 doesn't make a lot of sense. And if you take, I play rook d1, pinning your bishop. I guess you have to play c5. Um, and then you're probably going to lose your pawns in the center because your bishop's pinned, your e-pawn's hanging, and the computer actually says this is equal. I'm not sure if it wants to take some pawns or it wants to put the knight on the d6 square, which also looks pretty reasonable. So, yeah. Um, so this position, white's actually okay. Um, unfortunately, after rook d1, which was played in the game preparing d4, well, black played bishop d4 and stopped it. So, yeah, and now, okay, it's, Great bishop here, and um, some pawns are sort of weak. Yeah. Okay, so now he made another move, which probably isn't very good. Bishop c1, although always retreat. Okay. Um, queen d5. Uh, here he played a really risky move. I guess. Yeah, I guess both players saw the threat. I guess if I don't do anything, you can play queen g2 check. Well, I don't see what to do against that. So let's make a silly move. Queen g2 check, queen g2, e2 discovered check. And then I take the rook with check, making a queen. Yeah, okay, so that's incredibly winning. Uh, so he saw that and played king h1. Okay, now king h1 makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. Okay, b5 attacking the knight. So the knight moves you can take on b3, which is exactly what happened. So black has the two bishops, and if I'm counting right, which isn't necessarily true, black has an extra pawn also. And this rook f3 to h3, that didn't really pack a lot of punch. Um, okay, so knight c2, b5, 
bishop saves itself. Rook goes to g3. Is it better than h3? I don't think so. It defends g2. It's more of a defensive move, I guess. g6, which is unnecessary, but it's not that bad. Um, d4 with a discovered attack on the queen. Okay, and he saw it. Knight e3 attacking the queen, and after queen e4, well, it's probably like 1.6 for black, 1.7. Let's see. No, it's just about plus one. Okay. Oh, he could take the pawn on b5. I hadn't seen that. If he doesn't take the pawn on b5, then black's doing great. So queen takes b5, material's equalized, but black has a big advantage because of his bishops, and the white bishop on c1 isn't very good. And here he made one of his two queen blunders in the, in the match. Um, I assume time trouble, because I don't think Richard blunders his queen when he's not in time trouble. But the queen's pinning his knight, and unfortunately he moved his knight. So the truth hurts and loses his queen. Not defended. So uh, a bad blunder to end the game. I think white was worse most of the game and maybe in trouble, but not in that much trouble. Just, just a little trouble. Okay, so that was game one. Um, Richard also lost game two. Um, F4. I guess Nastasio likes to play F4 with white and F5 with black. Okay. And yeah, white played sort of the same way. He played knight c3 again. When he played knight c6 in the previous game with black, he wanted to play knight b4, and he eventually took the knight on e5. This knight c3 I'm not such a big fan of. Um, knight h6 is an interesting move, because sometimes the knight goes to f5, and if white plays knight e5 early, you can kick it out with f6. So knight h6 is interesting. Okay, this game's pretty good. Uh, knight e5 here, that's a little early for my tastes. And then he followed it up with knight g4. So this is sort of like Richard Rapport playing himself. It's unusual positions. Um, yeah, I mean, probably black's a little better here because white's bishop on c1 isn't very good. And he plays b3. Yeah, this is a very reasonable play from Richard. It's over 300 points overrated, but his position looks pretty good. And I still like, I like black a lot. Not really sure what white's doing. And yeah, black just has a big advantage here. Um, white's pieces are pretty bad. So white makes a move I would never consider. He takes with a bishop. I would never give that bishop away. Um, taking either way is good. I'd probably take with a d pawn, because that d2 pawn is really backward. But I can take with f pawn, it's fine. Um, this is all good for black. Black has two bishops. Black has a better center. White's bishop on b2 is bad. So you, you got to like black. Um, Black wants to trade queens for some reason. White doesn't. Okay. Um, everything's okay. Okay, and now black made the first mistake of the game for his side. Um, well, white can't really do very much here, so a lot of moves give black a nice advantage. I think something like plus one. Yeah, in fact, oh, closer to plus two. Wow. Um, yeah, it just doesn't like the position at all for white. I like this idea. One of the ideas gives bishop c8 to line up the bishop and the white queen. Um, but okay, he played e5, and unfortunately, this lets white play f5, and now, you know, white has some stuff on the king's side. White's position, white's queens and knights actually look well placed now. So before they really couldn't do anything, now they have some pressure. So e5, um, giving away the f5 square wasn't a good move. Now white's about equal, and they're moving back and forth. Um, black took a pawn. I'm sorry, white took a pawn, <laughs> and he's up a pawn. And black has very good compensation, two bishops, a nice center, but white has two passed pawns, so I can't underestimate that. Okay, so maybe an unclear position. Both sides have their chances. Um, I think the engine wanted to play c4, but I don't know, b4 is probably okay. C4, these moves are reasonable. Always play bishop f8. They traded knight g4. They traded some more. These moves seem pretty good. I can't argue with these moves. King g5. Black moves up on the king side. White moves up on the queen side. Now, I think this is where he made another mistake. Let me see if I'm right. Uh, computer says it's equal with basically any move, but he played rook h7, which the computer really doesn't like, because this lets white infiltrate on the queen side. It gives up the back rank. So 
Not really sure why he played rook h7, but okay, so he took and played rook a8. Now the rook's coming in, and the rook did come in. So now white's probably winning, because white has two pass pawns on the king's side, and I don't really see the compensation for black. So he's attacking everything and moving forward. Now he's two pawns up. Okay, looks good. Now he's three pawns up. Whew, that's a lot of pawns. So yeah, this letting white infiltrate with his rook, that, that wasn't very good at all. Um, yeah, there's just no compensation for the three pawns. And white threatens rook c8 mate. And white has past pawns everywhere. And you can't stop the g6 pawn, so he resigned. Okay, so black was doing pretty well that game. And I think his only two real big mistakes were e5, which let white equalize, and rook h7, which gave white a big advantage because he infiltrated. Um, yeah, otherwise I thought the game was pretty reasonable from black. White's play was a little strange in the opening, but okay, he plays a little bit strange, confuses his opponent. Okay, and Richard got to draw the third game. A lot of people thought Richard would lose 6-0 because he's 350 points low rated, so that, that could happen. Scandinavian, and as with the other games, the players played their own way. Um, White played the very unusual d4. Um, usually they play knight c3, and he played e5, which is reasonable. And they immediately got this position that wasn't very interesting. So very symmetrical, White has a knight on d4. And Black made a lot of blunders now and was completely losing. Bishop c5 is a bad move because after bishop e3, we have a lot of knight discoveries. And bishop, C4, bishop e4 doesn't make any sense. I mean, he already moved his bishop. So, I mean, white should just castle here. But c3 is okay, but there's nothing wrong with just castling. And then white has three pieces out, and he's castled, and black has one piece out. And if we go back here, it's one to zero, and it's black's move. So black made three moves in a row by moving one piece and one pawn, and black just, and white just moved pieces. So really bad play here from Black. So Richard Staples, this is actually like a, almost a winning position because even though the pawn structure is symmetrical, White's just way ahead in development. Okay, another mistake, knight d7 blocking the bishop on c8. And it's not knight f5, it's knife f5. And Richard does that, knife f5. Wow. I mean, always play bishop f8, but maybe not. I wonder if bishop f8 is the best move. Let's see. Uh, it just says everything's horrible. Okay, bishop f8 is not even a move. All right. Um, okay, he kicked the knight out, but g6 is really weakening. It weakens the dark squares when the guy takes your dark squared bishop. So that's very dangerous. Okay, so white's just crushing it here. White's doing great. Yeah. And this is funny. This position they got to reminded me of the positions I get, and I've done lectures on them in the King's Indian, where I play the exchange variation, I trade everything. I've actually had very similar positions to this um, with the difference that my pawn's on c4. Um, and when I get the two bishops, that I slowly grind the opponent out. Um, okay, it happened this game too, but later. So it's very reasonable, all these moves. White just has a big advantage because that bishop on f6. Um, white, I mean, black really has nothing. Just a huge advantage for white. Um, I would guess almost plus one. Let's see what the computer says. Yeah, plus one. Okay. Because, I mean, my bishop on f6 is a monster. Wow. And I have all the dark squares forever. Now, this move I don't like. I think white still has an advantage, but usually you want to keep some pieces on. Rook a1. I'm not a fan of that move, but I think white still has a big advantage. I just wouldn't do that. Okay, and now white made a move I really don't like because white's king is on a1. So I would put my king on c7. I would say, hey, look over there. And then I would play king c7. Yes, and I would win. Um, so, I mean, I would be really surprised if king b2 is not the right move. Um, of course, it doesn't give king b2 as a move at all. So, although it's thing like bishop e5 and then king b2. I see king b2 in all the lines, just not right here. I'm not sure why exactly. I guess I can play king b2 when I want. Um, okay, with this move, I, oh, I wouldn't consider unless my king was already really active. Play g4. And the reason I don't like g4 is, once again, he's allowing trades. 
And in this instance, the way he played the game in the next three moves, he gave black a passed pawn. And I wouldn't do that with my king on a1. So I moved my king up the board. Um, f5 is a good move. And here I would not, I would try to avoid trading pawns. I'd really consider g5 here. I'd probably play g5. I don't know if it's a good move, but I don't want to trade pawns. Attack the knight. Played h3. And I'm pretty sure I would take with the f pawn here, but he took with the h pawn. So black is getting a past h pawn. And I mean, white's not really playing for a win anymore. This is just a draw. There's very few pawns on the board, and black has an outside past pawn. So he just took the knight. But there's, there's no winning chances here. And then just a dead draw. Okay, so White had a big advantage in the ending, and I think starting with Rook A1 in this position, he let his advantage go move by move, and then and trading all the pawns on G4 and H5 just led to an immediate draw. Too much trading. Okay, but better from Richard. Okay, and the last game didn't go well for Richard. I mean, sorry, the last game. That was the last game of the day. Okay, now this is the first game of the next day, game four, the second half of the match. Again, a very unusual opening. Um, D4, C5. Now, Richard, unfortunately for him, likes to play this line d5, f5. He plays that with the black pieces. Um, but Davide avoided this line by playing the move c3. So now you could actually transpose into an exchange slav by doing this. But the players are a little more enterprising than that. So black played g6, dc5, we have a very unusual position. Actually, I've had this position almost exactly with colors reversed with my opponent having a knight on, well, it would be f3 because I have black. I've had this position against Doug Eckert, I think. But um, well, white's a tempo up from that because he's white. So, Okay, g3, not trying to hold the pawn. Eh, sort of boring, I don't know. I'd probably take black here, I guess. Not the most exciting position. I don't like this knight b3, knight fd4 idea, but it's probably okay. And again, it's not very exciting. It's very close to equal. Not much is happening. Pretty boring. So far, the most boring game. Does it ever get interesting? Can white trades more pieces with knight e1? So it's still boring. Again, I'd rather have black. Black has a little more space on the queen side. The open B file for black seems more important than the open D file for white. Um, but again, it's pretty close to equal, I think. It's not a very exciting position. H4. Okay. So just when I said it was boring, black decided to make the game very interesting. And it was pretty bad what he did. So I'm guessing here it's going to be like 0.17 for black. It's um, well even better than that. It's getting closer to 0.17 than what it's thinking. Okay, so black has a nice advantage, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Okay, closer to 0.3 now. Um, knight g5. The idea is to play e5, and then if the knight moves away, knight h3 check. Fortunately, e5 gives away the d5 square, so it's a really bad idea. It doesn't work, and after h4, it really doesn't work. And he probably should just go back to e4, but he played e5. And this lets white get a big advantage or a winning advantage in several ways because uh, knight h3 check's not a threat anymore because white has king h2, which he didn't have previously. So like knight takes g6 is good and taking on g5 is good. Uh, I don't see why taking on g5 doesn't just win a pawn. Take on g5, they take on f4, you take on f4 and you have a pawn. Okay. What he did was okay also, I'm not complaining, but this e5 move is a really bad move. It, it gives away the white squares, it blocks the bishop on g7, it potentially loses a pawn, very potentially. But he didn't take the pawn, he played knight d5, which is okay. And the knight saved itself and he played h5. And now I'd definitely rather have white because I have the d5 square for my knight, which I didn't have before. Um, so black played for some checkmate tactical tricks, but they just didn't work. Um, okay, so knight f8 defending the pawn on g6. King g2 pinning his own knight. I guess he wants to play rook h1. King g8 unpinning the g-pawn. Takes, takes. Queen d2 attacking h6. And then f4. Wow, that's pretty aggressive. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, black's really weak in this position and let the knight sit on, on d5. So I guess f4 is called for. Um, they traded queen to d7. I guess he wants to go to g4, rook to g1. Makes sense. Uh, the white rook is opposite the black king. Black played g5 to block it up. Then white played f5. I'm assuming white has a nice advantage here. Let's see. Yeah, it says plus two. I didn't think it was that good. Okay, so white is virtually winning here anyway, I guess, um, technically. Um, but yeah, if you're under the age of 10, close your eyes and turn away for the next move because you don't want to see this. Um, and psychologically, this doesn't really make a lot of sense because there's some blunders that do make sense. This one doesn't. I mean, white played f5 and there's nothing defending f5. So if you had the black pieces, you should be like, hmm, why did he do that? Why did he move f5 where I can take it? And then you would figure it out. But some people get greedy when they think their opponent blunder, they, they pounce a little too quickly. Queen takes f5, okay, walking into a fork, which is bad in chess and in real life. 97 check, and that just wins the queen. Again, it was pretty late in the game, so I'm guessing time trouble, because it was game in 60. There's no test second time control, and there's no increment. So um, probably just had no time on his clock and play queen takes f5. So, okay, luckily, I mean, psychologically, luckily for him, if he didn't take on f5, the computer still doesn't like his game. I think much worse was when he played knight g5 and e5 and gave all the white squares away. That wasn't uh, very good. And I'm guessing before knight g5, um, I would prefer black here. Yeah. And then after h4, the computer says it's equal. Just play the knight back to e4. and Yeah, but after e5, yeah, white has a lot of ways to get an advantage. So that was like the one thing he did wrong was this knight g5, e5 idea. e5 really gives away the d5 square forever, and the white knight just sat there until it forked the king and queen. Okay. Finally, the game Richard won, and um, the game ended immediately. Uh, Stasio could have resigned before move 10, but who wants to lose in less than 10 moves? So he played on past 30 moves, so he lost in 30 moves. But it's just an opening blunder, a little hmm, too confident, having three and a half out of four. Okay, so he played a London system. Black played the aggressive c5 and queen b6, and white correctly played knight c3, and here, black already made the losing move. Although, if I play queen b6 and they play knight c3 and I can't play queen takes b2, then I'm not going to play queen b6. So queen b6 is already a mistake. I'm guessing that white has an advantage here. Yeah, white's already you know, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 better probably. So that's, yeah, so the queen b6 wasn't good. Okay, here he just blundered. Queen takes b2 is... It's terrible. And basically everything wins. Uh, knight b5, knight d5, they both win. So you play knight d5, it's fine. There's no defense to knight c7, so you can resign here. Um, he played knight a6, white took it. This even helps white because white can castle now. So not having the bishop on f1 is actually nice for white. Okay, and probably rook b1 is cleaner, but he played here, it's fine. It's up a rook, and you can't win the knight. So that's not good. Played rook b1, which is good. Trapped the knight. And he attacked the knight. And white defended it. So white's up a rook. And the game was played on, but white's up a rook. So it's not much going on. White gave away a piece so he could trade a lot and get a very easily winning position. Knight goes to d5. Now white's up the exchange, but he now he has the knight on d5. So he didn't have to give the knight away, but this is a very easy win also, so I don't really blame him. Knight f6 is a good move. Um, you can't take the knight, and you can't not take the knight. The computer actually takes the knight and gives the queen away, so that's what he did, but it doesn't matter. You're down the exchange for nothing, and you're, and you're losing. So check wins the queen, and black only has a bishop and a knight for the queen. That's not enough. Um, very good play from white, very forceful. And I guess black wanted to make 30 moves before he resigned, so it didn't look so bad. Then here he resigned. White's been plus 7, plus 8 for the last 20 moves. So very good game from Richard. Opening blunder from, from Nastasio. That's the way it goes. Three and a half, one and a half. Time for the last game. And here it is. Um, and they didn't play a boring draw because the match was over. 
Um, in fact, when the match was over, three and a half to half, one game was decisive and the other game went a million moves. So they, they were playing for real. They weren't just uh, playing out the, la the last two games. <clears throat> okay, so Nastasia is white, the higher rated player, and they get the symmetrical position. Now, let's see how smart my audience is. When's the last time you saw this position in my videos? I had something to drink, so give you time to think about it. That would be in the game Magnus Carlsen, Ben Feingold. And that game continued C4, Bishop takes B1, with Danny Wrench going insane, saying that Magnus blundered, even though this is theory. And White can actually take either way on B1. He took with the queen, he played king D1, and this position is about equal. Some people I know prefer White, actually. White has two bishops. And I, I lost a pretty bad game. So David did play knight bd2, didn't play c4, c5. I mean, Nastasio could do the same thing. He could take the knight and play bishop b5 check, but he didn't. Could still do it. <laughs> um, and instead, they traded and traded and traded and traded and traded and traded. Bishop digs b8 here is very strange because well, king on e7 isn't blocking the bishop on f8. So that's perfectly fine. And they trade some more. It's always good to keep trading. And I don't know, I guess I like black because black has two bishops and black has two pawns to one in the center. I don't know, 0.25 for black maybe. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's gonna say about 0.25 once it thinks for a long time. Okay, so right now it says 0.34. All right, so black's better. Now black played a move I would never consider in my life. Bishop takes d4. You don't want to go up your bishops. You don't want to help black white's pawn structure. So that's a strange move. Bishop takes d4. Um, I mean, you could take all three ways. Probably I would take with the e pawn. And now I would guess it's equal. I don't think anybody's better here. Yeah, okay. I like when the computer agrees with me a little bit. All right, and they move around. Not much happens, more trading. And um, I don't think anybody's better here. Lots of maneuvering, not much happening. I don't think anybody's better here. Because I'd rather have black, because I like the knight on c4. Although white's knight can go to c5. So let's see if black's better. Yeah, black's a little better. Okay. Um, Rook e4. Strange move trying to make the position weird. I could play knight c5 here, but okay, he decided to trade everything. Takes, takes, and now he was expecting to take on e4, then knight takes b2. Um, but he played king c2, defending his b pawn and forcing black to defend the pawn this way. But yeah, I'm not convinced that that's correct. Let's see. King c2, well, the players know better than I do. King c2 and white's better. And now it wants him to play knight c5, which makes perfect sense to me. I like that knight on c5, but he traded some more. Nastasio, Richard refused. Trade some more, and this is about equal, I guess. And I guess this is just black blundering a pawn. So I wonder if he has to lose a pawn here. Yeah, he's already in trouble. So I think this knight b6 move was going too far, because f3 was very strong attacking the e4 pawn. So probably just don't play knight b6, play knight takes knight, or maybe king d5. And um, uh, black's perfectly fine, if not better. Now black's worse, because white's knight becomes better than black's knight. And yeah, he's just losing a pawn here. Um, I guess he could play knight e7, but I could play check and knight g5. Yeah, your position's bad, because you can't move your majority, and white can play b3, c4, and start getting a passed pawn. So I don't like black anymore. Okay, he lost a pawn. Now he's just down a pawn for nothing. And a very, very strange move was played later in the game, which we'll get to. Okay, and it was here, so I assume white's just up a pawn. Yeah, plus one. Okay, white's a pawn up and there's nothing going on and he sacrifices the exchange. So that's uh, not a move I would have considered again. It's an interesting move. Gets a lot of black's pawns, but now white's rook, I'm sorry, black's rook becomes a monster. Black's Rook has been terrible the whole game, and now, roar, F file, H file. Okay, Rook H8, hoping for Knight takes E4, so he could take the H pawn, so White doesn't do that. 
and then he does it, okay? And I think this is just a draw. It should be. Huh? Yeah, okay, it's just a draw. Um, yeah, two pawns for the exchange, very few pawns on the board. And in this position, in fact, black should probably play for a win by, you know, rook g2 maybe, attack the g-pawn. But I guess he's had enough, the match is over, he was a pawn down for nothing, sort of happy to draw now. Very little time on the clock, his opponent's higher rated, so just check and agree to a draw, which I think is fair. I think a draw was a fair result because white was certainly had no advantage and was worse out of the opening, then he equalized, then he got a very good position when Black retreated his knight and didn't defend properly. Um, but then White sacrificed the exchange needlessly and was worse. But So a draw seems like a reasonable result, especially here. This should probably be a draw. So um, interesting match. I think um, Richard did better than almost everybody expected, except maybe himself. Uh, and we're going to have more matches here at the chess club. Um, and we, I think uh, Thomas Gall, who's a Iowa Class A player who I've seen many times in St. Louis, playing in tournaments there and giving a little sponsorship himself. Um, he's going to sponsor some more matches here between class players. Normally the players will be between 1,500 and 2,000, and he doesn't want it to be non-competitive. He doesn't want the score to be 5-1 or 5 half half. He'd like to see something interesting. And um, of course we'll have it here at our, our chess center in, in Atlanta. And um, hope you guys come down and maybe one of you will play a match someday at our, at our chess center. Well, this is Grandmaster Ben Feingold here at the Chess Club and Scholastic Center of Atlanta. Please like and follow us uh, here on YouTube and go to our Facebook page and our web page and go to our homepage, our website, atlchessclub.com. And there's a donate button somewhere there. I think it's in many places. And help out our club so we can have more great videos like this and provide more great content. Okay, bye everybody. See ya. Thank you.